Airtable has good documentation on these functions, but it doesn't tell you the full story of how to use them. That's because the functions behave differently depending on where you're using them. I will link the Airtable documentation in the description, but what we're gonna do here is actually go through some real world examples of how you might use count, count A, and count all in all of the different scenarios where you might need them. Okay, so first, the simple stuff. These are the characteristics about these three functions that are the same no matter where they're used. So the simple count function counts only the number of numeric values that are passed to it. Count A counts non-empty values, meaning it will count numbers, but also text and dates. Count all is the same as count A, except that it also counts blank values that are passed. And like I said before, even though this is true anywhere you use them, uh, the result that you get is still different depending on whether you use these in a regular formula field or in a rollup. And so that's what we're gonna cover right now. So we have a Harry Potter themed example base today and it has three tables in it. The first table is a list of the Hogwarts houses. And then we've got a list of people um, with the the house that they're in and some, uh, some info about their wand. And then uh, the last one, we've got a list of points. So anytime a teacher awarded or deducted points from one of the houses. And the uh, both the points and the people tables are linked back to the houses table so that we can look up information on uh, which people are in each house and their characteristics and then also the point changes so we could for example add up where the houses are at based on the points that they received and lost and when you're using a counting function you're almost always going to be counting something that you pulled in from another table uh, so a linked record a lookup or a rollup field the major exception to that being a multiple select field if you want to count the number of options that are selected in a multiple select field, there's a special formula that you can use for that. And I'll go over that at the end. Um, if that's what you're here for, I will make chapters so that you can skip right ahead to that point. So the most important thing you need to know when you're using a count function uh, with information that you pulled in from another table is that the count functions behave very differently inside a rollup um, versus just using them in a formula field. And that's because as soon as you pull them into this table and they're already in a lookup field, linked record field, or a rollup, they appear to a formula that you write as just one long string of text, basically. So I've got a bunch of example fields that I created, so I'm gonna unhide a couple of these. Um, and so these are a count, count A, and count all function that are all based on the people field here. So this is a linked record field, and you can see we have as, and I'll just open this up so you can see it. This is just a simple formula using the count function and then uh, passing it the people field. And these fields are the same except using the count a and count all functions. And as you can see, you got a zero value for count and then you got a one for each of these two. And that's because if you think of this as just one long comma separated string, it's gonna look basically like this to the formula, except it's gonna have text instead of numbers. Um, so if you imagine it that way, then if it's gonna just count numerical values, obviously that's a zero. And if it's gonna count text and numerical values, then it has one long string of text, so it's gonna get a one. And adding in blank values, there aren't any blank values, so you're also just gonna get a one. So if I hide these and then instead open up the points count, and these are based on the point changes look up here, which is looking up uh, this column here that just lists all of the points that were added or deducted. So if we go back, we can see we got the same exact thing because it's not treating this as numbers. So even though uh, you know this is supposed to count numerical values, it's it just thinks this is a long string of text that includes numbers and text. So if we actually wanna count these things, how do we do it? And it's, there's a different answer for each one of these. For a linked record field, there's actually a special field in Airtable that is specifically for counting linked records, and that is the count field. So if I get rid of these here, I can open up my count field here. And so this is a count field type, and then you just choose the field on the table that you wanna count, count people. And then I get this list that's got, says 38 people in Gryffindor, 13 people in Hufflepuff, Etc., which matches the amount of people in this list um, with those values. 
Now, if we want to look up the number of point changes, we have to create a rollup to do that and then count within the rollup. So let me hide the count field and then I'm gonna open these rollup fields here. And so if I open this up, this is not referencing this field, but it's a rollup that specifically references the points table and then the points field within that table. So it's doing the same thing that this lookup is doing, but this is a separate rollup. And, um, and so if I count the values within that, then I actually get the number of values because in this case, the rollup understands that this is a list of actual numerical values. And you can see that the result for count A and count all are both the same because they count numerical values too. They just also count text and blank values. And since all of the values are numeric in this case, um, they're all gonna give you the same result. It's also worth pointing out that with a rollup, we can count the linked record uh, field in the same way. So I get rid of these, then I can pop out these rollups and these are counting um, based on the people table. So if I look, open this up, um, people, and then it's looking up the name field. So it's just the first column that has the name of each character, Harry Potter, Remus Lupin, et cetera, and then counting the values. And so for the count formula, you get a zero because these are not numerical values, right? They're text values. But for the count a function, you get the full number of, of people and then count all is the same. Uh, but actually if I go into the people's table and say, I just delete George Weasley's name. So we've still got this record that's linked, but uh, it's a blank value. And then I go back here, then I see a difference between these two functions because the count a function is not gonna count that blank value, but the uh, count all function does count that value. And since I've got this field here that has the wands lookup, um, this is gonna be treated just like text, just like everything else. And so that's, that's just gonna be the same, same uh, result for these various ways to count it. So now that we've covered the rollups, the last thing is to write a formula to count this multiple select field. So let me hide these rollups here. And then I'm going to open up this count multiple select field here. And so this is a formula that basically is looking for the commas. So um, knowing that when we get the this colors field passed to the formula, it's going to be a comma separated list of the values here. So it's going to say red comma gold. So basically what this formula is doing is just counting the length of the total text here. And then it's using the substitute function to remove all the commas and then it's counting it again. So it just knows that because you remove the commas, it's basically counting the commas. And so it knows that you, because you remove that many commas, um, that it's going to be that number of things plus one, since you don't have a comma, you know, at the end, after the last one. And this is the official substitute formula that Airtable actually suggests that you use to, to count a multiple select field. So we'll actually just link to that web page uh, so that you can look at the instructions there if you need more information. So to kind of conclude what I've taken from looking at these different count formulas is that basically whenever you want to count stuff that you're pulling in from another table, um, you should use a count function within a rollup. And there are basically almost no reasons why you would use a count function um, in a formula and just reference something within the same table um, because it's just gonna look at everything as text unless it's a multiple select field. If you are watching this and you know of another reason why you would wanna use a count field, uh, let me know, I'm super curious. And I hope this was helpful to you in getting unstuck wherever you were stuck. If I did get you unstuck, I would love it if you drop a like or subscribe to the channel. This will help other people with the same problem find this video and other videos like it. And it will also give me feedback on which videos to make more of. If you want to keep leveling up your Airtable skills, check out these videos here, which are focused on Airtable formulas as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.